What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Texas A&M and Alabama got their spring ball underway. You'll hear from Jimbo Fisher as we wonder who's calling the plays between him and Bobby Petrino. And Nick Saban sounds off and a suspended player in Tony Mitchell. Locked on SEC starts right now. Our Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, let's jump into it. As we get into spring ball, a couple of teams getting started on Monday, and one of those, Texas A&M over in College Station. Jimbo Fisher speaking to the media on Monday. As they open spring practice, he announced several staff changes and player absences. He said, uh, while there are no significant position changes among players, Damian Craig, he'll be back coaching wide receivers. James Coley will be back coaching tight ends. And Steve Adazio back coaching the offensive line. Asked about retaining him, Jimbo Fisher said, I think he's a very good coach, very productive coach. He's done it for a long time, and I think he will do a good job. Now, Fisher explained he... Never made a decision about bringing on new offensive coordinator Bobby Petrino to AM until after Petrino left Missouri State for UNLV. He said after meeting and talking with him, we thought it would be a good fit. Now, Jimbo Fisher bringing you a couple clips of what he had to say. Here was Jimbo asked about the difference in the offense with Bobby Petrino coming in. Jimbo, how much difference can we can – uh, will there be in the in the offense, and how much control? Now we ain't worried about. Here's what we're doing. How much control yeah. does Bobby have? We're running our thing. We're going to be base fundamentals. We ain't getting into scheme. We ain't getting into anything. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to practice. And what we're going to do on a daily basis. When you have to get into scheme, what we put in that day, and then we'll be base fundamental. How you execute your scheme is what's about fundamentals. Front row on right. What, what went into the process of bringing Bobby? Petrino on board. Well, that was and, a guy we wanted to hire, a guy I've known. Your previous relationship with him as well. I've known him a long time. We've had great respect for each other. And uh, we, when we talked, we thought it would be, after meeting and talking to him, we thought it would be a very good fit for what we're trying to do and the things that we believe in and what goes on. Now, Jimbo was asked about what uh, Bobby Petrino, what he liked about him. Jimbo, uh, what is it about Bobby philosophically that you like about because what he's done in the past and, and uh, what he brings to this program? Yeah, I mean, Bobby's an experienced guy who's called plays and done a great job, and he's got a really good foundation and fundamentals of football, which have great balance, whether it's running the ball, throwing the ball, and has been able to be very productive in the things he's been able to do. How would you describe similarities and differences between you two philosophically? Uh, we ain't got enough times on hours on day to do all that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're all, we believe in one thing, execution. Now about play calling, Jimbo Fisher was a little more vague. Here was Jimbo asked about who will be calling the plays. About who ma who makes the play calls. Would that be him or you? Yeah, I mean, we'll go through that as we go. Go back to the back. To Plan the on right. him making calls. Plan on him calling plays. I have no problem with that at all. Now, lastly, Jimbo was asked about Connor Wegman and if maybe he has the upper hand coming in as the quarterback who finished last year. Yes. Jimbo, last year you had Connor start the last four games of the season. Is it an open competition between him and Matt? Every right position now? is an open competition. That's what spring's about. You, nobody has anything. I don't care what position you are. You got to prove yourself each and every day. Each and every day you got to go out there, and, the, and then the guys who play with the most consistency will be the guys that play. I don't care if it's quarterback, running back, OL, DL, safety, punter, kicker, snapper. I mean, all the way across the board. That's it's about one thing: competition. What is your was your competition, your, your ability to compete, and then your productivity. Now, as our buddy Travis Brown noted, he said, uh, worth noting, Jimbo Fisher mostly observed quarterback drills during the first spring practice while Bobby Petrino ran the drills. He said it had been way more vocal during this time period in years past. Too small of a sample size to take a whole lot from it, but worth watching. Bobby Petrino is running the offensive drills, and Jimbo is uh, just kind of observing. Maybe that's what's to come at A&M. And Bobby Petrino very well could be calling all the plays. And uh, Jimbo could take a backseat and just be that head coach game manager. We will see. Uh, one more thing. Uh, Jimbo was asked about name, image, and likeness. And he said the coaches 
and the players don't really worry about it. He said, look, that's why Anaya Smith has been as productive as he is. When you keep the main thing the main thing, it's incredible how successful you can be. So Jimbo saying, hey, let's focus on football here. That's why you came here. Hey, that whole name image you like this thing does help, though. Meanwhile, over at Alabama, Nick Saban and the Tide, they got their spring ball underway on Monday as well. Nick Saban speaking with the media, and first things first, he announced uh, that Alabama DB Tony Mitchell suspended following the freshman's recent arrest in Florida for drug possession. Here was Nick Saban on Tony Mitchell. Uh, Tony Mitchell has been suspended from the team uh, and all team activities until we gather more information about the situation and what his legal circumstance is. And, um, you know, I mean, guys, everybody's got an opportunity to make choices and decisions. There's no such thing in being at the wrong place at the wrong time. You got to be responsible for who you're with, who you're around and what you do, who you associate yourself with. And, uh, the situations that you put yourself in. So um, it is what it is, but uh, there is, you know, cause and effect when you make, you know, choices and decisions that uh, put you in bad situations. Mitchell is facing a charge of possession of marijuana with the intent to sell and or deliver, according to a Facebook post from Holmes County Sheriff's Office. He was a sought-after recruit, four stars, the number nine safety in the 2023 rankings. Now, more from Nick Saban. He was asked about bringing in a younger OC in Tommy Reese and if that might help appeal to these young quarterbacks. And, of course, Nick Saban with a snappy response. And Nick, when you're breaking in two new quarterbacks, is it advantageous to have a younger offensive coordinator that's kind of been there at a, at a time not too long ago that – kind of can relate with well, what if you had an older guy that had been there not too long ago what would be the difference I, i'm that? saying I mean, like in terms of yeah, being well, a, I'm just being a quarterback himself in, yeah. in terms of i mean i think the most important thing is not young not old good all right effective good teacher good quarterback coach can develop quarterbacks can help them sort of learn and grow at the position and i think that was one of the the critical factors in the search for a new coordinator was that the guy would be a really good quarterback coach and has a history of being able to develop quarterbacks. And I think we did that. Lastly, all eyes are going to be on that Nick's, on that quarterback spot for Nick Saban at Alabama. He was asked specifically about that quarterback position and maybe what we can expect, what he's looking for in one of those guys being the starter. Uh, you have an opening at the quarterback position. What do you like about the guys who are going to be competing for that spot? Well, look, I think everybody has an opportunity. Um, you know, none of the guys have a significant amount of experience. I, I think Jalen played, you know, one game, half a game where he really had to play the game. Uh, and he made a lot of plays. He made plays in a different way than, than Bryce made plays. Um, you know, Ty, who made significant progress throughout the year but never really had much of an opportunity to play in critical situations in a game, um, is also someone that we think has developed and um, made a lot of improvement and has a lot of potential to be a pretty good player. And then we got two young freshmen that, you know, they probably have a long way to go, uh, but they're eager to learn and they're eager eager to uh, try to improve and get a better understanding of what we need to do. But development at that position is really going to be a, a critical thing for our team this year because I like the players that we have around them. Now Nick Saban also shared that uh, inside linebacker Deontay Lawson and outside linebacker Dallas Turner not participating in the spring as they're both recovering from injuries. Uh, he said those two guys are probably out for the spring completely. Both have had surgeries. Shouldn't be any issues for them moving forward, but they're probably out the entire spring. Lawson is a redshirt sophomore, appeared in 11 games last year, recorded 51 total tackles, two and a half tackles for a loss. And, of course, Dallas Turner, kind of the star uh, of this defense returning, coming into his third season with the program, second as a full-time starter, posted eight tackles for a loss and four sacks last year to go with 37 total tackles. So, couple of names that we won't see in regularity, but an opportunity for some of the younger guys to show up and show out there for Alabama. And, of course, we'll keep you up to date with all the uh, goings-on in the next couple of weeks at spring camp across the SEC. But, again, noting 
A&M and Alabama today as they both got underway. All right, thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we got some other football tidbits. We're going to go around the conference, some notes from South Carolina, and more. But first off, I want to remind you guys this episode, episode is presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, the tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel uh, Sportsbook app. It is America's number one sportsbook because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to points scored and three-pointers drained. Go check them out at uh, FanDuel. Of course, the uh, Sportsbook app you can download onto your phone. And FanDuel, they let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same-game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Continue on here, a locked on SEC, and we got plenty more to get into. So let's crank it up. Let's do it like this. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch! Around the conference, and we check in over at South Carolina as offense coordinator Dole Loggins is settling in there. He was um, kind of a controversial hire for the Gamecocks after Marcus Satterfield departed this offseason, went to Nebraska. Of course, Satterfield was often criticized by Gamecock fans uh, throughout last season. The offense finished eighth in the SEC in scoring, ninth in total yards. And Dole Loggins has never called plays at the college level. It only spent two years as the tight ends coach at Arkansas. Had a wealth of NFL experience as a coordinator, but none of the pro offenses he ran were that successful. So how's Loggins settling in there in uh, Columbia, well, the players like him. Running back uh, Juju McDowell said Loggins has quickly built a strong foundation of trust with the team. He said, quote, that's my guy. He's very team and player oriented. Uh, senior quarterback Luke Doty, of course, this is the third different OC he's going to be working with. Doty said it's been a drastic adjustment to learn his system, but he feels like the team is uh, clicking with his personality. So he's a big ball of energy on the field. He coaches with his heart, and he just wants us to play free and have fun. Uh, Fifth-year wide receiver, DeKarian Joyner, of course, friend of the show. He uh, talked about Logan, said he wants what he wants. Very demanding coach, but he's a coach who puts a lot of things in our hands. And lastly, Juice Wells, uh, wide receiver for the Gamecocks, said, Loggins is a cool guy. Good guy to be around. Always got high spirits. Love the way he coaches. Love the way he's finding new ways to get the playmakers the ball out in open space. So. Rave reviews so far of the new OC there in Gamecock country. Let's see what it does for Shane Beamer and crew heading into or throughout spring ball. Meanwhile, over Georgia, Kirby Smart is adding to his support staff. According to multiple reports, the Bulldogs are adding Brandon Streeter and Daryl Dickey as analysts for next season. UGA sports.com. Uh, first reported Streeter's hire and Dogs HQ reported Dickey's hire. Streeter served on Dabo Sweeney's as Dabo Sweeney's offensive coordinator and play caller last year. Was fired after just one season with the team, replaced by Garrett Riley from TCU. He's 46 years old, played quarterback at Clemson in the 90s. And of course, uh, Daryl Dickey was Jimbo Fisher's offensive coordinator last year, though he did not call plays. We know Jimbo was the one doing that, but. He had been in College Station since 2018, was let go this past year, and of course, Bobby Petrino brought in as the new OC. But uh, two very experienced guys there in Streeter and Dickey. We'll see what role they play with Georgia moving forward and uh, see what kind of impact they have. Meanwhile, pro days are getting underway very soon, and news over at Alabama as former offensive lineman DJ Fluker has been away from the NFL for a year. According to Jordan Schultz uh, of the score, he shared that Fluker is going to work out at Alabama's Pro Day next week on March 30th. Fluker spent nine seasons in the NFL from 2013 to 2021. So we'll see what shape he is in going to try to catch the eye of some of the NFL teams that will be 
there in person. And speaking of trying to catch the eye of some NFL folks, how about Cam Newton wanting to show teams that he still has what it takes to be a quarterback in the NFL? He announced he is going to throw at Auburn's Pro Day today. Uh, Newton's been away from the NFL for more than a year, was the number one overall pick, won the Heisman National Championship at Auburn. Dealt with injuries, played only two games in 2019 and 2020, signed a deal with the New England Patriots, uh, re-signed with the Patriots in 2021, but was released in August when Mac Jones was named their starter. Cam's going to turn 34 in May, but wants to show some NFL teams what he can still do. So good luck to Cam Newton. We'll see if he can uh, still fling it around. I bet he can, but uh, going to be fun to uh, see him there at Auburn's Pro Day. And there you have it. That is the latest news going on around the conference as far as football. Coming up next, we're going to touch on some of the basketball nuggets out there. Stick around. I'll lock on SEC more after this. <laughs> All right, roll along here, Locked On SEC, and we've got you caught up today with a lot of uh, football topics throughout uh, spring ball. So let's hit on a couple of basketball nuggets that are out there. So we got the Sweet 16 coming this weekend, three SEC teams still involved. And we'll start over at uh, Tennessee as uh, Rick Barnes, not buying into the narrative that Tennessee played dirty against Duke and that they were too physical Rick Barnes saying uh, this week, I think playing good, hard basketball, it's something nice to look at. I know our guys played hard. I know Duke played hard. From my perspective, I didn't see anything dirty from either team. He noted that uh, he is on the rules committee, and the referees did what they thought was right. He said, I thought they officiated the game the way they felt it was going. Well, from my perspective, I didn't see anything dirty from either team. So Rick Barnes uh, answering critics for – some folks out there saying, oh, Tennessee, they're dirty. They're physical. Um, asked about being a team that's favored against Florida Atlantic, FAU. Barnes said he's not sure if Tennessee should be favored against a team that won 33 games. He said that means they have a model of consistency. Uh, he said everybody you talk to about them, they rave about them as a team that really understands what they want to do together. And 33 wins speaks for itself. The Havals and Owls going to play at 8 Central, 9 Eastern on Thursday night on TBS. So we'll see if the Vols can punch their tickets and advance to the Elite Eight. And while over Kentucky, they're still licking their wounds after their loss over the weekend. And John Calipari getting, uh, well, he's under increased scrutiny over there in Lexington. And Calipari was asked about his response to fans and Big Blue Nation's frustration. He said, I have empathy. I understand what this program is about. I think, again, that's what makes it a, what it is. And that's why I tell the players, this isn't for everybody because expectations are so high. The same with coaching. It's not for everybody. thing is, there's a high expectation level, and this is Kentucky. You put that on, the other team is going to play out of their minds, and they're going to play like they have nothing to lose. Calipari said he tries to create a buffer for the players so they don't, they don't hear outside chatter. And he reflected on that, how how that unfolded for him and the players this year. He said, that means you got to play that way. I understand it. He said, my concern are these kids, and I tried to keep uh, what you're saying off of them with a couple. Maybe I didn't do a, as good a job as I thought I did. I wanted them to just play, have fun, enjoy the experience, make the plays you make, take what they give you. Now, Paul Feinbaum did not uh, hold back on criticism of Calipari and Kentucky. He was on Jocks FM on Monday with Greg McElroy and Cole Kublik, and he said, look, Kentucky has become irrelevant. We get all excited about them every year because they got the number one recruiting class coming in, which they do again in November. They were the number four team in the country. They had to fight to get into the tournament in February, which they did. But then they laid another egg. And to the elite college basketball world, getting knocked out in the round of 32 is considered a failure. Feinbaum went on to say, even by moving the goalposts, Kentucky had to reach the Sweet 16 because the last few years of having a losing season, last year losing to St. Peter's in the opening round, he said, just to wash away the stench of the last couple of years, you wanted to see them get to the Sweet 16. There's no way you can look at this season as anything other than a failure. There's no way you can look at John Calipari's career and say nothing but the clock is ticking loudly. It's been 11 years since Kentucky won a national championship, eight years since they got to a Final Four. So clock is ticking. We will see, uh, of course, 
gave him a lifetime contract. So I don't think he'll be going anywhere anytime soon. And one more uh, basketball nugget here. Uh, Lamont Paris, his South Carolina squad, obviously went through their struggles in year one, and now they're losing one of their players to the transfer portal, Chico Carter Jr., entering into the transfer portal, according to ESPN. He will look as, at options next year as a graduate transfer. Started his college career at Murray State, where he earned two letters, joined the Gamecocks as a junior in 2021-2022. Was considered a senior this past year, but of course COVID-19 granted him an extra year of eligibility. He is the fourth South Carolina player to hit the portal, joining center Trevon uh, Minot, forward Javon Benson, and forward Daniel Hankins Sanford. So some changes coming there for Lamont Paris's crew at South Carolina. And a quick baseball nugget, a shout out over the weekend to the Missouri baseball team. They uh, took it to the Tennessee Volunteers over the weekend. They outscored the Vols 23 to 6. And with those wins, Missouri improved 16 and 3 on the year. They have won five straight with a uh, upcoming game against rival Kansas on Wednesday night. Uh, everything that could go wrong for Tennessee uh, went wrong. Missouri never trailed, jumped out to big leads in all three games, uh, won two games. Uh, or they won Friday, and then Sunday they played the doubleheader. Uh, Tony Vitello was ejected in the first game uh, for arguing with the refs and or the umpires and then came back. But uh, Austin Trosser was perfect on the ball, pitched five and two-thirds innings with five strikeouts and zero hits allowed. And coming up next weekend, Missouri will take on South Carolina, a group that has also started very well. Uh, they are 20-1. and one. They just outscored Georgia 29-3 to three in their weekend series sweep. So a couple of teams to keep an eye on here in the SEC in South Carolina and Missouri. Maybe we had too low expectations for those squads coming into this season. And there you have it. That is the latest going on around the conference here, basketball, baseball, and Everything else. I am Chris Gordy. This has been Locked on SEC. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Now go check out our other podcast, Locked on College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college hoops all in one place. Here from some big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. This, is, this has been Locked on SEC. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.